What's going on everybody, this is Blockchain Bulls, and today we're going to take a look at some mid-cap gems. These are coins that are above the top 20, so they're outside of the top 20, but below the top 100. This is the area I consider to be the mid-capitalization of the market caps, right? So if you're new to Blockchain Bulls, you can subscribe, keep up with us, watch any of our other videos. Here we got Stellar Lumen, Sleeping Giant, you've got Cardano vs. Polkadot. Um, some low cap stuff right there, which we'll get more into later, Theta. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into this video. Thanks to everyone who's new, newly subscribed to this channel, and all you new subscribers, welcome. So, let's go ahead and talk about this. So, I said, outside of the top 20, it starts here at this list right here with VeChain, although I don't put VeChain on this list, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But, before I get into any of this, this is not professional financial advice. This is information for you guys to begin your pursuit of learning on your own and doing your own research. Just because you see it in this video doesn't mean you have to buy now or that you have to buy it. It's just saying, hey, these are coins, these are projects that you could add to your list. Some of you guys are going to already know about some of these. But the reason I like mid-cap projects is because as the top tier kind of moves, then you it kind of pours down, right? It's trickle down, right? I'm not saying it's trickle down economics, but if there was a trickle down economics in the crypto market, when the top tier moves, then comes in the middle class. And then the middle class kind of rises up and that's how it should be and that's what's gonna happen more than likely. And so we're gonna talk about these coins. So the very first one on this list is actually pretty far down the list. It's called RSR, Reserve Rights, okay? So we're gonna get into this coin right here, but you can see it's actually already in, uh, it's in, it's, it's in price discovery. I mean, it's, it's at all time highs now, $392 million market cap. I mean, if you compared that to something like Stellar or RIP XRP, I mean, you know, those are in billions. So, I mean, if this thing uh, gets going, that's where it gets exciting, but you can see it is definitely at its all time high here and it's got a lot of room to grow from here, but let's go ahead and take a look at this particular project. So, Reserve is a flexible pool of stable coins. So this is more of that. How do we get away from the US dollar and go to a more stable, different type of currency that's not as highly fluctuating? It's like the US dollar is inflating and it's not really a stable coin anymore. Uh, so how do they create a new technology for stable currency? Because that's what makes a currency a currency, stability. It's like you can't have a currency as a global reserve if it's unstable. And right now the U.S. dollars become unstable. And so there's nothing you know else you could say about it. But you can see it's already available in Venezuela, Argentina, and Colombia because they're using their technology to, sh to help stabilize those economies that have runaway inflation. So how does this exactly work? Well, let's dive in and take a look here. So you can see you have... RSV, which is actually the stable cryptocurrency that is economically and legally robust at any, robust at any scale, decentralized, 100%, 100% asset backed and funded by top Silicon Valley investors. Okay, now RSR uh, is, a, is the actual uh, protocol token that plays a role in stabilizing RSV and confers the cryptographic right to purchase excess reserve tokens as the network grows. So if you're an investor, that's why you're looking at RSR instead of RSV, because this is the stable coin. And do you invest in a USDC or Tether? No, you just kind of uh, don't do that, do you? Now, here's what makes this kind of interesting here. You can see a list of the investors. Peter Thiel is a major investor. Obviously, he was there. Uh, he's a Silicon Valley investor involved in, uh, he actually has a background with PayPal, Facebook, uh, if you take a look at some of his background, Coinbase is obviously investing in this. So when it comes to exciting up and coming projects, Ready Reserve token or Ready Reserve uh, rights here, you can take a look at it. You may enjoy it. Uh, you may like what you see, and you could see uh, where you could pick it up here. That's the question, right? This is this is always the issue. Uh, typically, you're going to need to get it on Uniswap. I'm sorry, but uh, if you don't know how to use Uniswap, we do have a video on how to do that. But Binance Global, you know, most of these exchanges aren't really open in the United States right now. So that's a little bit of an issue trying to get your hands on it. But if you know how to use Uniswap, you can get it there. So moving right along here, we're going to go to an easy coin to get. This one you can get on 
Coinbase, no problem really, the graph. Now, gr the graph was an interesting project when it first hit. You, you saw it go up to 66 cents. Everyone was trying to chase it as it was going up, but most people who've been in crypto for a long time knew, heck no, I ain't touching that with a 10 foot pole because that thing's going up way too fast and it's gonna crash down. I'll just wait till it corrects and comes back down. So give it two or three weeks. Here we are now, we've hit bottom, it looks like around 30 cents, sitting at 37 cents. Probably a good time to really take a good look at the graph finally. And this one you can get on Coinbase pretty easily. So let's take a look at the graph and see exactly what they're working on. Now the big thing that got everyone's attention was these uh, was the website? They were like, "Wow, there's a website. It looked great." Well, they got APIs for a vibrant, a vibrant decentralized future. Uh, these APIs are really popular um, because you know you have API three, but you have like these oracles. So the graph is an indexing protocol for quer querying networks like Ethereum and IPFS. Anyone can build and publish open APIs called subgraphs, making data easily accessible. So. That's the big thing with the oracles and open graph is the data, right? Like how do we get all the all the data from the ledgers and the transactions and all that off of the blockchain? And so that's where the graph comes in and that's why people like it. So subgraphs can be composed into global graph of all the world's public information. This data can be transformed, organized and shared across applications for anyone to query with just a few keystrokes. An API is an application programming interface so it allows people to really scale their trading and whatever they're trying to do with cryptocurrency. So all data is stored and processed on open networks with verifiable integrity. The graph makes querying the data fast, reliable, and secure. <clears throat> so they have a lot getting built here. You can see they got DeFi, governance, grants, and philanthropy. Okay, yeah, a lot of people like to talk about that, but we'll see if they deliver on that. Marketplaces, entertainment, and social. Uh, the marketplaces, I mean, there is a lot of commonalities that you see across many other projects uh, and they're talk, talking the lingo. Uh, so, I mean, it is interesting as an API project, the graph uh, for data processing. But as far as this other stuff that really kind of sets it apart, I mean, this is not the first time we've seen uh, pretty talk like that before. But hey, there is some stuff about this that's interesting. Um, the one thing I would say is when you're doing research on these projects, you want to know a little bit more about them. So definitely uh, take the time to get familiarized with a project like this. The next one on the list is Celsius. So you can see it's sitting at 602. Um, in terms of price action, it's totally in price discovery. I mean, it, it, you'd have to take it back to the last three months. This thing's just been mooning. So, I mean, you could wait for it to correct or you could just say if it doesn't correct, then I'm okay with missing the boat on this. But um, yeah, you would have wanted to get into Celsius somewhere around uh, maybe a dollar thirty-one, but it's totally been a big project for people to make a lot of money with. Uh, it is kind of difficult to get your hands on, so again, Uniswap seems like most of these exciting pro protocols you're going to want to get started with uh, Uniswap at some point in time. We do have a training video on this channel on how to do that, so I will uh, link to that at the end. Um, but that's our Uniswap video. I'll also probably put it in the top comment because I think people are going to want to take a look at these and maybe consider doing a small position, maybe, who knows. But Celsius is an interesting project to say the least. Let's take a look at their website. So uh, if you do get on Uniswap and you get your hands on it, um, there, there is an application. I've actually downloaded the uh, application. So you can see they've done a whole nother way of uh, doing the website. We're seeing a different color than we usually see instead of that purple. Uh, the modern way to manage assets. So this is asset management, earn rewards, borrow cash, pay and transfer. So this is like um, filling a need, right? It's like there, there is a need in cryptocurrency because uh, Coinbase is always having problems and they're limited. Uh, cash app kind of does its job. So it's like whenever they're layering on top of just being able to be a fiat gateway and then an exchange, like something like Celsius is more than just a fiat gateway and an exchange. They're actually allowing you to pay and transfer. And they're even doing borrow cash and earn rewards. I mean, yeah, Coinbase kind of does staking, but it's probably the weakest staking platform you'll ever find, right? In terms of payouts, like Kraken is where you want to go for that for most part, but then you can only do limited assets there. But look at this. I mean, they are offering some interesting stuff. This is crypto on your terms. Digital currency should be accessible to all with meaningful rewards and real flexibility to secure a loan, send to friends, build wealth. That's Celsius. So Celsius is doing Again, they took they took it and they layered up one. They, they took what was already going on with this Fiat Gateways exchanges and they put a layer on top of it. And that's what makes uh, Celsius so interesting. And uh, if you do check out the app, you may like it. I like the app. I think it's great. I do hold a little bit of Celsius myself. So um, I don't hold any graph and I do hold a little bit of RSR. 
I will put that out there just in case you guys are wondering. So the next one that's kind of interesting, and I'll start moving a little bit faster because uh, we're taking a long time here doing this, Zillica. So Zillica, again, another project totally in price discovery, but not quite at all-time highs. It's been as high as, what, uh, you could have got this uh, back in 2018 for as high as, what, I think 17 cents, 16 cents. There you go. We're currently sitting at 8 cents, so it hasn't re-reached its all-time high. It's sitting at number 39, just under a billion dollar market cap. Let's go ahead and see where you can pick it up. And again, this is going to be one of those projects that you kind of got to dig around to get your hands on, but it looks like Vitrex is going to be the one that you could probably go to to get that. So you can see here, Zillica is a coin. Let's go ahead and take a look at their website. So as we come down here, we take a look at Zillica at a glance. Now, the big thing is that it's scalable with smart contracts for really quick transaction speed. That's the big thing. So they're committed to delivering a scalable and secure platform for developers and enterprises who wish to build decentralized applications. So you've, you've heard this talk before. This is a Singapore uh, project here born out of the National University of Singapore and the team of academics, entrepreneurs and engineers uh, sharding in practice. So they brought this practice of sharding into it, which allows the blockchain to scale in a linear fashion because scalability has continued to be an issue as the years go by. And some of these older projects on older source codes can't really scale. So they have a eco friendly dual mining, which is interesting. And then they have a uh, Safe by Design Smart Contract Language. Zilliqa is powered by the first peer-reviewed and Safe by Design Smart Contract Language called Skilla. I don't know if they're the first one, but uh, because I know that peer-reviewed is something that Cardano has been working on with IOHK, and obviously Ethereum has been working on this, but they're saying first peer-reviewed and Safe by Design Smart Contract, so I guess some way they made that. Uh, <laughs> we were able to make that comment. Uh, Non-custodial staking with Zillica, so if you're interested in knowing more about how to stake, you can go on here. But anyway, so again, just adding this to your list of things to look at. I didn't say buy, I said add things, add to your list of things to look at. So the next one we're going to talk about is synthetics. So this has definitely uh, been a rocket moonshot right now. I mean, whenever you see coins doing something like this, you just need to learn and say, well, what's going on here? What are they doing? Maybe instead of saying buy, you just say, well, on a pullback, I'll make a safe purchase on something like this. So let's take a look at synthetics and see what they're offering and bringing to the table. So they have derivatives liquidity protocol. Synthetics is the backbone for derivatives trading in DeFi. So derivative trading in DeFi is coming. You know, the decentralized finance uh, arena is really bringing in a lot of the traditional finance world's uh, technologies and trading capacities for finance. But this fintech stuff with synthetics is interesting, allowing anyone anywhere to gain on-chain exposure to a vast range of assets. So it's like what we're really looking at right now in this asset class is projects building things to show how to trade. It's like the blockchain is basically saying like this is Wall Street 2.0. I mean, that's what you're seeing with most of these projects, especially the ones that are getting a lot of the, uh, the attention right now. Again, staking is a big thing. I'm going to have to make a video on the top coins to stake because I've actually had that asked. But you you could see right here, you could stake Synthetics, you can stake Zillica, you could stake Celsius. And those are just three coins right there, which would be on that list. But um, that video is coming. Uh, there's definitely more other coins to stake than that. But anyway, I just wanted to do that. They got this Paraswap. I like this if you guys want to look into the Paraswaps. Next one moving right along here is Kusama. This one's a funny one because of what they call themselves, but this is like a polka dot pro, uh, spin off, basically like the the what do they call that um, when when a, when they need to probing ground. It's like a probing ground for polka dot. That's what it is. Six hundred twenty five million dollar market cap. You can see it's also in price discovery, but nothing too crazy. It hasn't had its parabolic moment yet. But if you go right here, look at what their website says. I made a full video on this. It says expect chaos. No promises. This is the place where they go to do um, crazy stuff with polka dot projects like get your hands dirty. That's why they say a canary project. Polka dot's wild cousin. So anyways, you go in here, you can see unprecedented interoperability and scalability. Again, the word scalability, interoperability coming up for blockchain developers because this has been the headache of the blockchain. It's like maybe 2017 actually had its correction that we we're just now picking back up because they had to, they realized they had to solve the problem 
of interoperability and scalability because they realized they were limited. So now here we are again, back in the bull run, right? Because growing uh, asset class, right? All right, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. I've already made a full video on this one. If you guys wanna go watch it, it's on this channel. Now, when it comes to uh, currencies, another coin here, um, I would say something like this is really interesting, Nano. And if you've been in crypto long enough, you know that the network fee is really something that just, it's source of contention for me. I mean, look at this, this uh, market cap. Nano is not very, uh, it doesn't have a very high market cap. And it's actually an interesting coin because of the uh, lack of cost that it costs to actually send it. Nano makes money efficient for a more equal world, simple to pay with easy to accept and open to all. So the more I was digging into this one, the more I became interested. This one is really a project that got my attention. And I've known about this since 2017, 2018. But you can see it's feeless. Nano is feeless, making it practical and inclusive for everyone in the world. Eco-friendly, okay, we've heard that before, but instant. So it's fast and feeless. That got my attention. That's all I need to hear. I'm like, so you got a fast currency and you're not gonna charge a lot of fees or your fee list. All right, great, you got my attention, so let me look into you. And that's where Nano is for me, and you could see sitting at $2.28, it's been as high as, what? <laughs> I'm not saying it's gonna go back up here, but it was up where it's $28, it looks like. $27 back in uh, when it hit the market in 2018. I think it's been around since 2017 though. Yeah, there it is, $297 million market cap. Uh, you can get this one on a, quite a range of uh, platforms. Kraken, looks like you could get it on, where else can you get it? I got lots of places to get it, but if you're in the US, where can you get it? Um, looks like Kraken's the big one. I could have sworn you could have got it somewhere else. Nonetheless, uh, you guys may want to take a look at this one and just research it and understand if it is as fast and feeless as they say it is, or if that's just hype. But I like Nano, I've been into Nano for a while. Another one that I'm not gonna go too much into, but uh, I, I would be, I would have to announce it because I recently made uh, a pretty good investment with this one and I'm pretty happy. Uh, Icon, this is a project that people were into back in 2017, uh, 2018 I should say. Uh, pretty, pretty aggressively, it had a $9 price, currently sitting at 63 cents. I recently bought it at 35. And the reason I did that at 35 down here, um, when did I buy it around? Seem like over here, yeah. Yeah, around Christmas. Reason I bought it at 35 right here, right before Christmas was because I was like, man, this thing's been as high as $10 and it looked like it had hit bottom. I mean, when you see a chart running like sideways like that for so long, it's like the bottom is in guys. And so that's why I invested in it. But this one's a, a Korean project and uh, Korea has a lot of technology. They're definitely a technology uh, mega hub um, they haven't really done too much with their website since they launched, but uh, being that it's a Korean project and it's one of the top Korean projects that I can think of right now, um, I definitely thought it was worth uh, taking a look at again. Now, I probably just invested in it because I knew that it had hit bottom and it had nothing but up to, do, up to go, but I wouldn't say I'm going to long-term hold this until I start hearing more information. I'd be concerned with these guys with the uh, scalability of their platform. Um, and what they're working on uh, today. But this would be something to maybe add to your list. I'm pretty sure you could stake it. The one thing about staking this particular coin is it's like, again, it's got that old world staking. It's like you got to be a little bit more uh, than just a newbie to stake Icon. Whereas with Polkadot, it's kind of like just send it over to Kraken and push the button and you're in there, right? Well, with Icon, it's kind of like you got to go through all these processes of voting and, and different things. So but it's worth taking a look at, seeing what they're up to. But this one may be a, a fading star, although it's worth keeping an eye on just because it's one of the, still one of the top Korean projects. Uh, I'm always interested to see what kind of blockchain projects are coming out of Asia. I feel like I'm not getting the information that I need about that, but um, Icon, I remember, is a big one. So that's why it's on the list here. But anyways, thanks to everyone for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Bowls. Thank you.